welcome back to The Great Debate. This is going to be a little bit more of a video essay on a particular topic, specifically this one down here, the impact of 3D printing on model kits and hobby kits. There are a lot of model kits sold in Japan. For those not familiar, these are you know little figurines that you can buy, and as well as uh, essentially um, mecha you can assemble and a uh, whole variety of, of different uh, options there from completely static figures to very movable characters. And there are a lot of things you can do with those. So I'll, I'll show you some examples. Um, so here are some simple Gundam model kits. This is a GM uh, from the, the very basic real grade line, I believe. And it's very poseable. They've done a great job with the plastic, making sure you can get everything, you know, exactly the... Uh, the position you want and, you know, move things however however you want in terms of angle. Get that a bit more correct. You know, you can move the the legs and do all that kind of good stuff, right? And it looks pretty much like a GM from this series. These are unpainted. These are just the, the colors that come um, straight off of the sprues. This is a an actual Gundam, Strike Gundam from, uh, from Gundam Seed. And you have the little thing on the back. There's a little, gosh, it's got a little dusty. Um, and so, again, similarly, very poseable. You can move things around, change your pose, change your, your legs, and, and so forth. And, yeah, it looks pretty similar. Oh, a few little stickers on this one. Um, so very similar to the mecha in the show. Not exactly, but darn close. Then you have 3D printers. And a 3D printer simply lay, lays down layers of plastic. Um, you have a, this a rod of filament. There's actually a couple back there. Um, you have this little rod of filament coming in, plastic filament. And it comes in, and there's a nozzle and then a plate. And the nozzle goes down, and there's a preset uh, list of commands, which tells the nozzle to heat up that plastic and then go down and goop that plastic along the plate at a certain, or in a certain shape and then moves the nozzle up a little bit and goops down more plastic and keeps doing that over and over and over again until it's built up a particular shape. And you, just, you pop that off and you have a, a 3D object. That's 3D printing. There are other ways of doing it. You can use, you can cure resin and all kind of stuff. But for the hobbyist, the home hobbyist, that's normally the way it is. And so here's an example of a not completely cleaned up, but a, uh, a, an example of a 3D printed Gundam, an RX-78 Gundam. It's all one physical object. It was printed all in one piece and over the course of, I think, about 24 hours. And as you can see, that's pretty, pretty close in terms of detail to one of these model kits. Now, this is not movable um, by design. It was, you know, uh, designed and, and uploaded as a single, single object with no joints, no movable joints. But, and, and I, I would need to do more cleanup. You can see on the back here, um, this is the support material that printed on, on the bottom to sort of to hold it in place as it was printing. So that would need to be sanded down and so forth, but not too bad. Um, question from Game Escape. What, what is the level of creativity in 3D printing? Can you create your own design or are you forced to use pre-made design? You can totally make your own. Um, I use Blender, which is a free 3D modeling uh, piece of software, uh, which is very, 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 very very complex, uh, provides a lot of, of options, a lot of, of, of things you can do in it. And you can basically model whatever you want. You can sculpt in Blender. So essentially you, you, you can create, say, a sphere, and then you use the mouse to gouge bits out and pu push, you know, pull things out like modeling clay. Uh, it takes a little, a little while to get used to those tools and so forth. You can get a more organic shape that way. Or you can take you know, spheres and cubes and cylinders and squash and stretch them and plug them together in different ways to build up your, your object or your, your model. So lots of op options there. Um, now this may not look particularly, uh, you know, interesting or, or complex. This is a 3D printed dragon. Um, this is all 3D printed myself. I did not design it, but I 3D printed all, all the... Uh, uh, the, the pieces and then glued them together and painted it. So as you can see, this can end up looking pretty darn impressive um, if you are willing to you know, uh, do the painting and, and kind of uh, get into it. So I paid 
you know, zero dollars and zero cents for this, other than the cost of the, the, the filament, which was, you know, maybe 25 cents, 50 cents worth of filament here, maybe. Um, yeah, maybe, yeah, less than a dollar, I'll put, I'll put it that way, of filament, of plastic, to print this out, and I've got my, you know, this is my dragon. Um, so you can imagine what the impact of this might have on the industry of people that whose salaries are paid by the production of these things. S soon enough, we'll be able to do this with these, and it's already happening. Um, this, I just kind of test printed a rifle that is sized for one of these Gundam models. So I could just you know, paint that up and have him gripping that particular, you know, that, that particular gun. So very quickly, we are entering this world where you can download at the very least and then 3D print your own objects. Now, I should also point out, you don't have to own a 3D printer. There are, um, there's anywhere from online services where you send them a 3D file and they print it themselves and ship it back to you uh, for pay, obviously. Um, you can also, there's a, a site called 3D Hubs where you can get together with, or it will basically pair you with a local owner of a 3D printer who will print the object you want to print and then you can, um, you know, uh, A, negotiate with that person on price and B, talk to that person about what you're trying to do and, you know, um, find an inexpensive way of printing what you're trying to print. Um, so it can be significantly cheaper to work with somebody you can actually talk with. And in general, it is a, um, um, you also get maker spaces. So there are a lot of areas in the country, um, all around the world, I should say, where somebody has set up a lab somewhere where you can walk in and they have 3D printers that you can print on. Uh, you usually need to have somebody there who's experienced, who's watching what you're doing and making sure you're you know, not screwing anything up. But you don't necessarily have to pay for use of that uh, of, of those materials and there's a, there are a lot of options so um, or you can you can buy a 3d printer and you know the, the 3d that you there's actually two 3d printers behind me right there they each cost two hundred dollars so it's like buying a paper printer right where you're spending a couple hundred bucks and you have this thing and you just you know print things out it's not that trivial to just print something out right you have to learn the the exact settings of your printer you have to um, learn the best um, heat settings for the brand of filament you're using. So some plastics need to go at slightly higher or lower temperature. So, the, you know, there are certain things to learn. It's not completely plug and play. But the point is, you don't have to spend 20 bucks on a model. You can spend a dollar and get this. So the question is, what, that, what is that going to do to the industry? How many folks are going to be willing to, you know, do that? Now, obviously, there is convenience, just paying 20 bucks and getting the thing. Although even this, you have to assemble, right? Um, and it takes a long time to print something. Um, this took me, I mean, it took me a couple of days, all told, because I would print one thing and then go off and do something else, then print something else, come off and do it. But, you know, so the head maybe took, you know, an hour or two, and the body maybe took eight hours to print. So it was different pieces all over time. But also, you know, you're not standing there looking at the printer while it's printing. You know, you kick off a print and then walk away and come back when it's done. Um, Game Escape asks, are there any fumes when the filament is heated? Yes, there are very mild fumes. Um, there's been a fair amount of research done on this. And as far as anyone can tell, basically, it's the kind of thing where you don't want to be standing next to a 3D printer eight hours a day while it's printing. Um, but you can certainly kick off a print, leave the room, do other stuff, come back in, you know, get a little bit of exposure. If you are getting a lot of long-term exposure to uh, those fumes, um, it's not carcinogenic. We certainly we know that much. Um, but you do build up essentially an allergy to it, so that you know when you uh, when you if you were exposed to it for eight hours a day for months and months and months, eventually when you walk into a room where where three D printing was happening. Um, you know, you get a little stuffy um, and, and, you know, you're, you're breathing, we get a little bit hoarse. That would be about the extent of it. You're not going to have an, an, you know, you're not going to have a, an allergy attack and fall on the floor or anything, but uh, you will just get a little, you know, um, a little closed up. 
as a result of that. So again, certainly something to, to be aware of. In fact, behind the Totoro there is a bunch of 3D printers that I have enclosed in plastic. So I have just sheets of clear plastic that I drape over the 3D printers. So that while they're printing, all that is enclosed in there. It's not, it's not a watertight seal, but it's plenty to keep those, uh, you know, those, that outgassing within there. Um, and it does help, I have noticed. You can, you can, there's a certain smell to it. Um, and so you, you know when that's happening. And so it, it's pretty easy to, to do that. Um, and just generally, you know, you know, do not 3D print in your bedroom if you're gonna spend all day in your bedroom. That's about as, as careful as you have to be. Um, and there are some other you know, reasonable security precautions. I actually have a um, smoke alarm set up above one of these just in case you know, um, a circuit board sparks or something happens or you know, something happens to a cable. It's extraordinarily rare. I never hear of it happening to other people. Um, but it's, you know, we're dealing with electronics and they're fairly new. So I had that just as a, as a, as a basic precaution. It's, you know, $7, um, smoke alarm is, is, uh, just for the peace of mind is fine. Um, so again, you can very easily imagine being able to, and somebody's actually done this. I haven't gotten a chance to print it out yet. Somebody's printed out, you know, each leg or sorry, not printed out, sliced off each leg, the torso, each arm and all that kind of stuff. And so you can print each individual object and then plunk them together and then they have there's the joints there um they're not as completely you know not all the joints as one of these but enough for some movement and it'll get better it'll get better it'll get better this is part, the other another part of the problem is that as we all know all you have to do is get a couple of geeks together to work on a project and they will make a lot of progress very quickly it's the wikipedia thing so, you know, because we have this, we know soon we'll be getting more detailed and better models. Even the folks who make these model kits are going in that direction, where this model kit uses a standard body frame that you can kind of swap out from model kit to model kit. So, um, you know, all of the arms in these model kits, this, this particular line, are... are Standard. You can swap out one arm with the other. You know the heads. You can swap out one with the other. There's not a lot of um, you know differentiation between those things, specifically for the modding community. Well, if the 3D printing community follows that model, they can very quickly create a huge variety of Gundam model kits and parts. And this gets down to some interesting copyright questions, right? What is the copyright on just the head or just the shoulder of a Gundam? right, or of any mecha, you know, does Bandai own the rights to this particular shape of plastic? Not necessarily. So how, how close can you get to all these elements before it's like, wow, we can crowdsource a Gundam model kit? Now, another element to that, too, is level of detail. Um, a lot of these parts have very careful tolerances, and desktop 3D printings can't necessarily print um, you know, extraordinarily detailed stuff down to the tenth of a millimeter. Um, they're now down to about the the actually they they go to, go to, yeah, they do go down to a tenth of a millimeter. Actually, uh, these printers all do, um, but that is the absolute limit for printers like these. Uh, so, if you have any variation in that, you know, um, if you imagine all of these layers built around a circular joint, for example. It's not going to be a, a, an exactly smooth um, circle there if it is so small that you've got, you know, a single layer, a, a layer next to it, and then a layer above, right? Um, or, uh, say, three layers around and a layer above to form a circle. Those layers are going to be, um, you know, they can't be squirted out at an angle. There's going to be, it's going to be, you know, a, a line, a line, a line. So... Getting everything to tolerance, especially when you're 3D printing the rod that goes into that hole, making sure all of that is going to be is going to work right is not necessarily quite the level of detail you can get with with a desktop 3D printer today, but we'll get there in a few years. I mean that's just that's technology. We will get better, um, especially since we're on the cusp of that. It's it's very very close. So the question is, why wouldn't 
model kit enthusiasts jump on 3D printing and bypass the official creators. And ironically, that's kind of how a lot of this got started back in the first place. Back in the 70s, official companies weren't making kits of Lum and, uh, and these other characters, uh, you know, the Yamato crew. Instead, individuals made their own, they were called garage kits. They, in their own garage, they would mold plastic and they would actually um, mold out of, um, I forget what the, the material you use for your, your originals, and they'd cast them uh, and create these, these, little, these little figurines. And then they'd, a friend would say, oh, that's cool. Cool, I'll make you one uh, you know, out of the mold. And so they would mold another one for a friend and it kind of grew from there. And then eventually companies like Gynax, General Products back at the time, um, started saying, hey, what if we actually did this legitimately and approached the companies and licensed the character to make the, the garage kit? So this came out of hobbyists to begin with. Why wouldn't a hobbyist pick these up and go in that direction? I think we're gonna see that. We're gonna see more and more 3D printed model kits, especially for lesser known characters, lesser known um, franchises where not, you know, there's not necessarily going to be an official model kit for every single mecha and every single anime series. And so fans will make their own and just put it online. And so you can print it and paint it and do whatever you want with it. Um, especially because you can actually, in indeed, you can also get filament in different colors. You can get blue and red and green and all sorts of colors in your filament. So you can do much what they do in model kits where you get, you know, some of this is white plastic, some of it's red plastic, some of it's blue plastic, and you just print it in whatever is the appropriate color. So I think we're aiming for a world where we go from this to this, and it ends up looking like this. We'll see, um, but I think the, the technology is just about there, and it's just up to the fans to leap on it and do something cool with it. We'll see.